previously on Third and Roll. And we are going to be talking more in the future about this new Toronto coach and that decision, that the decision that said so much to go for it on third and one, a very bold call. But here as they leave the field in victory, this call has won the day. The Argos could have taken the tie. Montreal maybe would have had a shot to kick for a point. But instead, the Argos don't settle for the tie. They go for a third and one when there's a sure tie field goal coming. They go for a third and one. They go for the win. They get the win. And a coach who had entered the season with, it seems like, some a fair bit of hesitation, I think it's fair to say, now has really stamped his name on the team as like as this is a coach who can make these kind of calls when they're needed. Toronto gets a huge win. Montreal down to 0-2. It is an age of Canadian football domination. In the West, the Edmonton Eskimos are a dynasty without equal. Behind the quarterback tandem of Tom Wilkinson and Warren Moon, the Eskimos won five consecutive Grey Cup championships between 1978 and 1982. In the East, four teams battle it out through a six-game season to see who will meet Edmonton in the championship game. The Toronto Argonauts have not hoisted a Grey Cup since 1952. Will this be their year? Let's find out. This is Third and Roll. Welcome to Third and Roll, a Canadian football board game podcast. This is the podcast where we play the 1985 board game Canadian Armchair Football. My name is Spencer. I'm here with my brother, Alex. Hello. Today, we are starting the second half of the 1980s season with the Toronto Argonauts on the road in Montreal to face the Alouettes. I will be calling the plays and rolling the dice for Toronto, and Alex will be doing the same for Montreal. So how this game works is the player on offense selects a type of play from a list of 14, then you roll two six-sided die, and then you see what happens. Today on the show, in addition to the action in Montreal, we're going to have Todd Gray interviewing Argo linebacker Ron Southwick on what it was like coming from Winnipeg to Toronto. But for, with that, let's take you now into the studio for the pregame show with Ron Booman and Brett Brannigan. Ron, take it away. Hello, everybody. I'm Ron Boom, and welcome to the Canadian Armchair Football Podcast. On a day when the Toronto Argonauts take on the Montreal Alouettes, and we enter the green rectangle, this parliament of football, to carry on the nation's business, and the order of the day is a game of Football. So to begin the proceedings, we will send it to Mr. Brett Brannigan. Ron, I can't believe it. I cannot believe it. I am livid. I cannot believe you actually said my name. How long have we been working together and I've never heard you say my name before? And you know what? I, 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 you did it great. You did it great. This game is a battle of first versus worst. And I am furious that I'm being asked to make a pick between the team that is in first place in the East, the Toronto Argonauts, and a team, the Montreal Alouettes, who has not won a game for this entire season. So who am I gonna pick? Who am I gonna pick? Who the hell do you think I'm gonna pick? I cannot believe it. I am picking the Toronto Argonauts. I gotta say, oh my I cannot believe it. I hope that they demolish those little birds. I hope they make those birds fly away into the trees. I hope they come with their boats, with their spears, with their oars, and they chase them right back to whatever hole they came from. Fly away, little birds. Fly away. Ron, back to you. Well, thank you, Brett. Uh, I wonder, it's a pity we don't have anybody on the Montreal side to uh, respond. So all I can say is that the Alouette is a, a fine little bird. But whether that translates into the football field, uh, we shall soon see. So now we're getting ready to game time, and so we will take it to the commentary booth with our commentators for today, Mr. Edward Welch and Norman Knuckleburger. Wow, Ron, thank you very much. 
here we are. We are here in Montreal. We're on top of the hill here. And I got my man sitting right next to me, Norman Knuckleberger. Norman, how are you doing today? I am just so happy that it's time for another day of football. I have been ready for a long time for football. Here it is. Well, let's go. It looks as though the Alouettes are coming out onto the field. The Argonauts have been standing there patiently, angrily waiting for them. The Argonauts, they really have a chip on their shoulder today. They don't think that they should even have to play a team with a record as poor as Montreal. So let's go for the coin toss. Let's bring out the dice here. So there's gonna, we're going to throw one single-sided die each. Looks as though the representative for the Argos, that's Bruce Clark. Bruce Clark has rolled a two. And Joe Barnes, the quarterback for Montreal, has rolled a three. So Montreal gets to pick. Norman, who is, is Montreal going to kick or are they going to defer? Well, first of all, Edward, I just love seeing these two quarterbacks kneeling at the center of the field and rolling a die on the grass. I think that is just really quite a memorable moment. Yeah, well, now it's time, of course. Uh, it's the old decision. Do you want to strike now or save a strike for later? And, uh, you know, my taste is always to keep something in your pocket for the second half and kick the ball now and take the advantage later. Okay, great. So Montreal is going to kick off to the Argonauts. Jerry McGrath on for the kickoff. And we're going to throw two six-sided die there, please, Alex. Thank you very much. Jerry McGrath, he has rolled a four. That one is goodness. That was a very weak punt. That was a 45-yard punt. The Argos are getting the ball at their... Working. Where do you kick off from? From the 45, right? <laughs> so 45, they're at the 45, and, the, and it was a 45-yard kick. Ah, uh, yes, the math in this game. You know, there's a lot. You really got to count yards. There's a lot of yard counting going on. There we go. So the Argos have the ball. They are at their 25-yard line. Wow, and there's really just kind of a sense of disappointment uh, in this stadium that the team that is just not winning, they come out and they give a weak kick. I mean, this is just a sorry beginning. Let's see what the Argos can get on the return. The Argos have rolled a 7. That is a 25-yard return. So we have the Argos bringing it from the 25 up to their own 50. It is going to be First down, Toronto. from their own 50-yard line. And I'm doing a little bit of remedial math here from the kickoff from the 45. 45-yard kick would take it down to the 20. And now returned uh, 25 yards from the 20 back up to the 45-yard. Okay, so it looks as though the line judge is telling the Argos, no, 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 back up five yards. It's going to be a first and 10 from the 45-yard line. You know, football has a reputation of being all about uh, physicality, but there's a, there's a good deal of mathematics, simple arithmetic involved in this game. So we've got Mark Jackson under center. He is going to be handing it off to Terry Metcalf. It's an off-left tackle. And Metcalf breaks it through the left side, and that's a 10-yard pickup. So that's going to be a first and 10 Argos from the... Now, Norman, what is the name of that line there? We are on the center line. Well, I am so happy. First seeing a 10-yard. That is a proper run to start the game, a good 10-yard run. And it takes us right to not one of those other lines that just has a number. This is the C line, the center line. Here we go, right at midfield. All right, so we've got the Argos ready to keep going. Jackson handing it right back to Metcalf, who's now going to do an off right tackle. Ooh, he rolled two ones. It looks as though he got stuffed there. Oh, my goodness. Metcalf tried to go around the side, and he got hit there by Gore Judges of the Montreal Alouettes dropping a beat down on Terry Metcalf there. It is going to be, at this point, second down, Toronto. Yeah, you know, the first time you have a good run, it's 10 yards, but the second time they were ready for him. They knew where that hole was going to be, and they closed it right up. Only one yard that time. 
So Argos with second and long now. It looks as though Jackson's going to have to try to keep the ball in his hands. Jackson going for a long pass to Terry Greer. Oh, and there are dice just falling all over the field here. He rolled two twos. That is a completion of 20 yards there for the Argos. Terry Greer down from the center line to the 35. Let's see what he can do in terms of yards after the catch. And he picks up an additional eight yards. That's going to bring him down to the 28-yard line. So that was a very nice 28-yard pass there from Jackson to Terry Greer. And it's going to be... First down, Toronto. All righty then. Looks as though we've got uh, the, the line judge is giving some additional scrutiny to the placement of the ball on the field. I'm wondering why, because that's supposed to be his job. And there we go, all sorted. Everything is good to go. Beautiful pass there. Beautiful pass. Argo's just cruising down the field. Jackson now handing it off to Metcalf, who's running right over center. Metcalf, he thinks he's got a hole. He thinks he's got a hole. He does not. Ooh, boy, that did not feel good. So, Argo's... Commentators curse there. I mean, as soon as I use the word cruising down the field, suggesting that they're having an easy time, they get a harsh reminder that very few things are easy in football. Turns out they were, in fact, cruising for a bruising. So Argo is back in familiar territory now at second and long. It is second and 12. They've been pushed back to the Alouette's 30-yard line. Jackson... Looks as though he's going for the screen pass. Jackson, holding onto the ball. He's waiting. He's letting the defense come towards him. It's a dump off to Metcalf. Metcalf picks it up for seven yards. Let's see what Metcalf can do after the catch. He's got his blocking out in front of him. Metcalf picks up an additional two yards. So that is a nine-yard pickup. It's going to be... A down. It's going to be a third and three from the Argonauts. Let's... Uh, do we have to hear something from the pedant here? What's going on? I believe there was a completion plus 10 yards, followed by a pass, run after pass of two yards for a total of a 12-yard reception. So on the initial roll, it was two ones. And two ones under a, oh my goodness, oh my goodness. I was wrong. I was looking at the short pass table and not the screen pass table. So that was a completion of 10 yards plus two yards after the catch. Folks, that's a... First down. Argos. Wow. First down Argos on that one. That was a surprise. I'm sorry, folks. I was looking at my notes when I should have been looking at the field. So it's going to be first down Argos at the Montreal 18-yard line. Line judge, is that correct? Valid. Argos really keeping the Alouettes guessing. They are moving back and forth between run to pass to run to pass. Jackson under center. He's going to go for a draw play to Metcalf. Jackson... Metcalf picks up four. So it's going to be a second and six now for the Argo. Jackson going into a hurry up now. I love to see that hurry up offense. Yeah, just keep the game moving. Jackson going for the screen pass now. He's letting the defensive line come towards him. He hands it off to Metcalf. Metcalf, he's got a line of blockers in front of him. He's moving out to the left-hand sidelines. He has a clear runway right into the end zone. It is a touchdown, Argos. Touchdown. Argos get the ball, march right down the field, and punch the ball into the end zone. What a start. Norman, what are you thinking? What a drive. I mean, what a demonstration of football, just moving the ball down, and fi down the field, mixing up the runs and the passes, going all the way to the end zone. 
And it looked like he was ready to keep on running even further. It's almost too bad that the field ends right there because he wanted to keep going. Zenon Andrew Shishin with the extra point. The extra point is good. So it is seven nothing Argos. Greetings from the desk of Dr. Footius Balunicus. The football tradition of the play action pass, along with any number of other deceptive plays, find echoes in the ancient past. As we hear from the second century Greek rhetorician Julius Polydukes, commonly known as Julius Pollux, there was a game known as Phininda, which may have taken its name from Phinides, its inventor. But he conjectures, perhaps the name comes from Phenakizane, to deceive. Because in this game, they show the ball to one man and then throw to another, contrary to expectation. Welcome back, everybody. The Argos getting ready to kick the ball back to the Montreal Alouettes. We've got Zenon and Rishishin on for the kickoff. He goes back and he really gives this one a nice little wallop. That one is a 55-yard kickoff, bringing the ball down to the Alouettes' 10-yard line. Alouettes with the ball. Let's see what they can do on the return. Who do we have back there returning? We've got Keith Baker. Baker breaks it out to the left-hand sideline, picks up 20. So it's going to be a... First down, Montreal. From their own 30-yard line. Well, the Argos seemed reluctant to even kick it off there. I mean, they were happy just to keep moving the ball themselves. They don't want it to give it, <laughs> give it to their team, give them a chance. But hey, Montreal, having a rough season. Here, here once again, they have a chance. You know, football... It always gives you a chance. You always, as long as there's time left on the clock, eventually your offense will get a chance. Joe Barnes is handing the ball off to David Green, who's running it up center. Looks as though that was a pickup of two. A pickup of two there. He did not get very far before he ran into Bruce Clark. Bruce Clark, the great Toronto defensive lineman, stopped him right in the tracks for a pickup of only two. So that is going to be a second and eight now for the Alouettes. Montreal is just playing real conventional football. You know, as much as I enjoy a good old-fashioned run, it almost seems there's, there's a bit of a lack of imagination here by these Alouettes. They're just playing the conventional play. All right, so with second and eight now, Barnes is doing a pitch out to Green. Green picks up five. That is going to make it a third and three now for the Alouettes from their own 36. This is a time where you really got to think, what are they going to do? What is Montreal going to do? They don't have much to lose, but are they going to go for it? Third and three from their own end. It would be a ballsy call. You know, as fun as that would be, Montreal's can't bring themselves to roll the dice on that particular play with uh, three yards to go in their own end. So once again, conventional football, kicking it away on third down. All right, so folks, Jerry McGrath has come on for a punt. That is a 45-yard punt. We are referring to the line judge. Where is he on the field? Working. Argos with the ball at their own 33-yard line. Let's see what the Argos can do on the kick return. Argo, my apologies, on the punt return, the Argos get nothing. (laughs) Wow, they got absolutely nothing there. Not even a single yard. Argo stopped right there in their track. Mm, well executed punt there. Just let the coverage team completely shut down any return. And so it's the Argos starting from their own. Is that the, Norman, is that the 27 yard line you're seeing down there? I'm seeing 27. Now, if there are any listeners who uh, will check our math, uh, please let us know. There may be some surprises. 
<laughs> That's thirdenroll at gmail.com. Spell third whatever way you want. We've got all of them. This is Chad Owens, the flying Hawaiian and former receiver for the Toronto Argonauts. You're listening to Third and Roll, a Canadian football board game podcast. First down, Toronto. Jackson is going to Metcalf. Looks as though he's doing a pitch out. Jackson to Metcalf. Metcalf picks up six. So that is going to be a second and four Argos from their own 33-yard line. There, that's the yard line you wanted to be at anyway, and now they cooperatively bring it back. Well, thank you very much, Argos, for that. So now Jackson, he's going right back to Metcalf. That's a faux pas there. I rolled the dice before I picked my play. The referees are harshly criticizing the Argos coach there. That is a real faux pas in this league. You are not allowed to do that. They're going to give him a slap on the hands after this game. So Jackson hands it off to Metcalf with an off-left tackle. Oh, boy. I rolled two threes. So Metcalf moving to the left. Metcalf, he's being met there by Gore Judges. Judges lays down the law on him, and then what? The Argos fumble the ball. Wow, this is the turn. This is the twist that Montreal was waiting for. Montreal will get the ball at the Argos 36-yard line with a minute and a half remaining in this first quarter. Well, and that is the danger lurking behind every play in football. The fumble can happen at any time, no matter how good a position you're in. All it takes is a little whoopsie-daisy, and it's all turned upside down. So that punt, effectively, was just a very, very long and successful pass for the Montreal Alouettes. You're listening to Third and Roll. Can I say the same thing, but in Tamil? Ningal Kurtikondiru for the Third and Roll. So it's going to be now... First down, Montreal. Let's see what they're going to do. Barnes is going for a screen pass. Barnes trying to dump it off to David Green, and David Green, he gets stuffed. Bruce Clark, he does not pick up anything. Let's see if he he can get any yards after the catch, as he did successfully catch the ball. And after the catch, nope, he gets nothing. Bruce Clark let him go, and they came back for some more. A double hit there, a double hit there. You know, these kind of plays are really frustrating. I mean, you you throw a pass, but you don't get any yards out of it. You have all the risk of a pass and none of the reward of any yards. Yeah, so that's one thing to know about the game. If you have a completed pass, you have to roll the dice again to see if you're able to pick up any yards after the catch. So with that, it is a second and ten. Barnes is getting hungry now. He's looking for a deep pass. He's looking for Baker. He's going for a long pass. Baker with the ball. He's got the ball at the six-yard line. That was a 30-yard completion. Well, you know, I thought I saw that ball hit the ground, but somehow he made the catch. Amazing. He just scooped it off, like, almost from the tips of the grass. He just, like, scooped it right off the grass tips. (laughs) So with that, that was 30 yards through the air. Two yards on the ground, that's going to bring the Alouettes down to the four-yard line. This is Jamal Campbell, number 67, offensive tackle from the Toronto Argonauts. You're listening to Third and Roll, a Canadian football board game podcast. All right, welcome back, everybody. Here we are, the Montreal Alouettes, with a first and goal from the four-yard line. Let's see if they can punch the ball into the end zone before the end of the first quarter. Looks as though they're going for a rushing play. And David Green brings the ball down to the one-yard line. Wow. Boom. Impressive stop by the Argos there. They just made a wall right at the goal line. So it's going to be second and goal from the one-yard line. Barnes is going to keep the ball. Barnes with the quarterback sneak, and he gets stuffed by Bruce Clark. That is was no gain on that play. So it looks as though now, what is this? What do we have coming up now? We've got third and roll. Yes. Third and goal from the one-yard line. Are the Alouettes going to go for it? They're staying on the field. 
They're staying on the field. I like this call. Okay. Looks as though, wait a minute. Wait a minute. They're trying for the third time to punch it in from a short distance. They were trying to punch it in. And what do we have here? There's a flag on the play. That is an objectionable conduct call against the Alouette's coach. You are not allowed to run the same play two times in a row. Alouette's going for back-to-back quarterback sneaks. That is really one of the main rules in this league is you cannot run the same play twice. That is going to push them back. Wow. Well, I'm hearing some very colorful uh, language coming from that Alouette's uh, sideline, learning some uh, French vocabulary here. Wow. So that is, that's a major penalty. So that's going to push them back. It's going to be third and goal from the 16-yard line. What are they going to do? I'm sorry, folks. I don't make the rules. I'm just saying what the what the referee is doing. And looks as though are they going to kick? I think this coach needs more than just the 20 second play clock to be able to calm down after that. <laughs> okay, so we've got Jerry McGrath on for the field goal. The kick is up, and it's good. It is good. So with that, it is going to be seven to three. Argos. Wow. Norman, what did you think? I mean, that Montreal coach, he he still hasn't calmed down. He still hasn't calmed down. How do you tell a guy that you can't run that play twice? It is the play he wanted to run. And when it doesn't work, you got one more down, so you run the play again. But that's not how it works in this league. Not. Not in this league, unfortunately. No, you cannot run the same play twice. He is so angry, he is looking to separate. Si je vous ai bien compris, si je vous ai bien compris, vous êtes en train de dire à la prochaine fois. Well, so with that, we are going to step away for a moment, and we will be right back right after this. This is James Franklin, quarterback for the Toronto Argonauts, and you're listening to Third and Roll, the Canadian Football Board Game Podcast. Welcome back now. Let's all cool down a little moment here, and let's step away. Our man Todd Gray, who is always one to ensure that cooler heads prevail, he sat down with the Argos linebacker Ron Southwick, who joined the team from the Winnipeg Blue Bombers to talk about what it was like going from Winnipeg to Toronto. Todd, take it away. I am here now with Ron Southwick, great linebacker for our Toronto Argonaut. Ron, you're a Canadian boy. I am, you. Yeah. You were born here. Uh huh. You live here. Uh huh. You play here. Uh huh. You have been in the league for quite some time. You played with Winnipeg, and that's a, that's understandable. The Windy City, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I believe that's Chicago, but. Uh, <laughs> And then you came. I swear, South Lake is book smart. <laughs> <laughs> then you came here. You came east. You headed east to Toronto. And you've made your home here for the past. This is, I believe, your third season here in Toronto. Ron, what was it, what was it like moving to a big city like Toronto from a place like Winnipeg. Uh, well, you know, it's kind of like trying to break your way through the defensive linemen, you know. In Winnipeg, it's so much easier to get around, right? But Toronto's so big, and you just got to put your head down and barrel through it and hope for the best, make it to the the five-yard line, the ten-yard line, get that down. Right. And you know a lot about that. I know. It's my life. Yes. 
and, and you know about that uh, as a defensive player being on the other side of it as people are trying to put their head down and barrel through you and you are behind. You gotta give it as good as you get it. You do. That's right. what it's like living in Toronto. You just give it as good as you get it. A guy cuts you off, you cut him right back. Is he cut him. Cut him. Oh boy. Ron, do you attribute a lot of your success to your ability to put yourself in the head of your opponent? To think, you know, there's there's a lot of linebackers out there who, you know, maybe in their head they think they're a cornerback or maybe they think they're a, they're a defensive lineman. But to be a linebacker that can think like a running back, what kind of advantages does that give you? Is that, is that something that you've been doing for some time going back to when you were at McMaster University? I'm going to let you think about that for a minute. I'm just looking at what a linebacker is. Linebacker is a defensive team. So he was only on the defensive side. Yeah. So what was the question again? So do you attribute a lot of your success, both in the in the Kane Armchair Football League and at McMaster, at the you know, where you were a member of the Marauders from 1970 to 1974, winning the team MVP in 1972, going on to win the J.P. Matras Trophy in your senior year. No, I remember that. Yeah, that was the year I believe. That was a good year. <laughs> that was the year I believe you had, uh, was it uh, four interceptions? I believe it was five. It was five. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty good for a linebacker. That was pretty good, yeah. Do, do you attribute a lot of your success to being able to get into the head and put yourself into the shoes of the offensive players of thinking like a running back of thinking like a quarterback is that something that you do what's your process there when you're out there you know, I'm, I'm really glad you asked me that question because that is exactly what i do football is a lot about empathy and you know, I've never been told I'm the smartest tool in the shed, but I've got heart, you know? Mm-hmm. And I can see how other people feel, and I can think how other people think if they're trying to beat me. So as a linebacker, if I can see how the offensive linemen are going to come at me and what I think they're going to do, I can react to that. Mm-hmm. It's all about thinking you're going to move left. You know what? I'm going to move right. And that's how you win the game. Wow. Wow. All right. Welcome back, everybody. So that field goal from the Montreal Alouettes, that was the final play of the first quarter. Alex, what do you what did you think about the way that that ended there? Well, I I'm just still stunned by the rare enforcement of this very <laughs> specific rule that we have in this league, and there was there was such a zeal to enforce this rule that the the Argonauts didn't even consider that they could have declined the penalty because their defend they they made a defensive wall for three straight downs, completely shutting down any forward movement of the ball. Incredible goal line stand by the Argonauts. And yet when the penalty was applied, it, it, they just, they, they, they felt it was very important that this penalty must be enforced and that therefore 15 yards were enforced, the ball moved back and Montreal could kick a field goal. What a quarter. Next time, on third and roll. The Argos pinned into their own end, couldn't even clear it from their own half. Barnes to Baker, having a little bit of fun out there. Wow, what is this? Who? What is this Montreal team and where have they been all season? Uh, there's subjectivity. Yeah. And there's objectivity. Mm-hmm. Right? Well, Norman, I gotta tell you, I feel like I'm back in... Back in my schoolboy days at Eton in philosophy class, and this is Nietzsche's eternal return of the same. 
Third and Roll is an independent Canadian football board game podcast recorded in Toronto, Ontario in 2019. Today's episode featured the voices of Spencer, Alex, Bryce, and Subi. This works for me. Thanks, Subi. Our cover art is illustrated by Bryce Hall. This episode was edited by Spencer Adams from Toronto. Our theme music is Magic Mountain by Jazzar. Brett Brannigan's theme is The Spellbreaker by Tritachion. Both songs used through a Creative Commons attribution license and freemusicarchive.org. Ron Booman's theme is Box Mach für Dach, performed by United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps. The Pedans theme is Box Variaccio in a Sank Club, performed by Kimiko Ishizaka. Todd Gray's interview music is Box Aria Variata, variation number three, performed by Brandon Kinsella. That's a lot of Bach. All Bach pieces used are in the public domain. If you'd like to help support the show, you can tell a friend or leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or whatever podcatcher you use. Or you can head on over to patreon.com slash third and roll and become a patron to get exclusive early access to new game episodes and to become a recurring character on the show. If you want to get in touch, you can find us on Twitter at third and roll or send an email to third and roll at gmail.com. New episodes every Wednesday. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time on third and roll. I'm not an afterthought, Spencer, but I'll move on. <laughs>